my name is Alex Yef and I'm the curator and custodian of the Maryland Cryptid Collection, an extensive menagerie of extinct and unclassified preserved animal specimens, amongst them the supposed cadavers of creatures thought to be no more than myth. I was approached in 2007 to oversee the examination and documentation of Maryland's extensive diaries. Um, I work alongside a team of specialists whose job it is to examine each study case to ascertain the history um, and the historical significance, uh, the species and the research carried out by Marilyn and his colleagues. The collection was the life's work of Thomas Theodore Merrillon. Um, he was a wealthy naturalist, born in 1782. He travelled alone extensively, seeking out items and specimens to add to his treasure trove. Um, his collection itself grew exponentially, uh, adding the preserved bodies of creatures that defied classification. Even into his late 80s, he continued to seek out elusive knowledge. Uh, despite his great age, he never appeared to be any older than 40 years old. His collection soon became the stuff of legend and he was all but f forgotten until 1942 um, when uh, a series of donations were made to an orphanage including a London townhouse and according to newspaper records uh, the do donation came from Thomas Theodore Merrillon. In 2006 the house was sold and was due for demolition. When the foundations were examined, a sealed room was found. Uh, within this space were thousands of wooden shipping containers. Uh, on closer inspection, the crates were found to contain biological specimens, and the entire contents was uh, moved from the cellar to a facility where it could be properly examined. I think I knew from the beginning that, the, uh, that they were all real, that it wasn't a hoax. Um, I was presented with uh, a wealth of information um, and all of these kind of self-contained studies of each species. The saving grace was, was Marilyn's attention to detail. He was fastidious, he recorded everything, um, he presented everything in a very matter-of-fact way. You had thousands of biological samples and, uh, and a wealth of, of annotated drawings. And, um, but I think the problem is that he spoke of ideas, uh, anachronisms, um, that, that kind of now looking back they, you could doubt them. He was talking about DNA in the 1850s and obviously DNA wasn't discovered until much later than that. I was employed to examine a series of preserved animal cell samples, just told to analyse the samples and to record any interesting qualities. Although the cells appeared dead, they were in fact in a dormant state. I submerged them in a culture medium and managed to coax them back to life. These were 2,000 year old skin cells, the DNA like nothing I'd ever seen before. After I submitted my findings to my superiors, I was asked if the cells could have been fabricated or interfered with to create such qualities. I said no. It was then that I was told what species these cells had come from. And what species is that? Homo vampirus. I'm sorry? The vampire. To say werewolves and vampires existed seems somewhat ridiculous. Um, I think that so many of these, these species are kind of wrapped up in folklore and mythology and the kind of core idea of a, of, of a species is lost because we're dealing with animals that existed in such small numbers that you can't really, there's, no, there's not enough information and, and I mean, Marilyn was recording this a hundred years ago um, and even then he was saying he was, you know, his, his studies would show that these species were, um, were dying out through, mainly through the encroachment of man into all areas of the world. Um, but if you look at these species individually, for instance the vampire Homo vampiris, it's a hominid, it has a, an immunoefficiency virus, it's a virus which must have encountered at some point in its evolution, it changed its genetics to serve the virus, it, but it also benefited the, the, the host um, by extending its life. I think that you have to look at these things from a very matter-of-fact point of view or, or you are lost in, in the kind of mythology and folklore of these species. You can talk about fairies and demons and dragons, but um, you're talking about uh, the possibility that over thousands of years these, have, these myths have existed and a lot of myths are um, at some point founded in reality and I guess it's our job here to kind of piece those ideas together and find out if there is actually a valid species um, within all of that. I think the thing about Merrill is that he, he 
presented a world that humans have cho chosen to ignore. Um, and I think that that's important because we can lose ourselves um, in, in, in the, the matters of humans and, um, and kind of ignore the other species that we share the planet with. It's recorded that Merlin disappeared in 1942. What do you think happened to it? Um, I'm convinced he's still alive. <laughs>